Hello, and welcome to Intech Centre's Functional Skills Tutorial. My name is Kerry ann and I will be guiding you through the Functional Skills Mathematics Example Paper for Level 2, provided by City and Gills. Please note that this video is made for educational purposes only for Intech Centre's customers and learners, and in no way is this video affiliated with City and Gills. Please also note that there are different ways in which you can answer the steps and questions in the exam and that this is only a guide. This is the second part of three videos looking at the City and Gills Sample Paper 3 for Level 2 Maths. And just as a reminder, Intech Centre is one of the leading training providers based in Islington, London, and we offer government funded courses in English, Maths, IT and Employability as well as private courses for anyone who does not satisfy the eligibility requirements and also the opportunity to sit just the exam. If you are interested in any of the facilities available at Intech Centre, you can inquire here and fill out this short form which will allow one of our advisors to get back to you within a couple of working days. Alternatively, you can give us a ring on 020 73 54 56 55. Now, I will be starting on the scenario 2 of sample paper 3. So, if we go on that, it tells us that this sample is based on holiday in Sweden. There are 25 marks available for this task, and it is important that we check all of our work as we go along. This task is about holiday in Sweden, and to complete this task, we will need to work out exchange rates, flight times, and the route for a sightseeing trip. And it's important that we check our calculations. So, to start, question 1A is worth 4 marks and it tells us that you and your friend will meet in Sweden for a holiday. You will travel from the UK and your friend will travel from the USA. You both need to exchange money in Swedish Corona and the exchange rate for Great British Pounds is given below. You will each take 8,500 Swedish Corona to spend and we must work out how much you need to exchange in pounds and how much your friend will need to exchange in dollars. So to start, we will look at how much you will need to exchange in pounds. And we know that we have 8,500 Swedish Corona. It tells us that for every one pound, you get 10.68 Swedish Corona. So to work this out, we will do 8,500 divided by 10.68. And we can use the calculator given to help us with this calculation. So 8,500 divided by 10.68 which gives us £795.880149. Now, as this question is regarding money, we must round all of our answers to two decimal places as money cannot go beyond this. So we will exchange £795.88. So we can just pop that into the answer box. Now we will work out how much money our friend must exchange in America. So we know that they also have 8,500 Swedish Corona and we know that one Swedish Corona is worth 0.12 US dollars. So to, do, to find out how many dollars we need originally, we will do 8,500 multiplied by 0.12. And again, we can use the calculator to help us with this which gives us 1,020, which therefore tells us that our friend must exchange $1,020 in order to get 8,500 Swedish Corona. So now we'll move on to question 1B. So 1B is worth 4 marks and tells us that we will meet our friend at Gothenburg Airport. Our friend is travelling from New York and there is a time difference between New York and Gothenburg. We find a web page that shows the time difference and we must now work out the difference between New York and Gothenburg. So we know that it's 8am in New York and we know that it's 2pm in Gothenburg. So to work out the time difference we will do 14 minus 8 which leaves us with 6 and therefore tells us that there is a 6 hour difference. So we can just pop that into the box. Next, it tells us that our friend's flight leaves New York at 15.30. The flight takes nine and a half minutes to get to Gothenburg. 
sorry, nine, nine hours, 30 minutes to get to Gothenburg, and, and we must work out the, what time the flight will land in Gothenburg. So we know that it sets off at 15.30, which we can convert for the sake of using a calculator to 15.5. Again, we know that it takes 9 hours and 30 minutes. But for the sake of using the calculator, we can convert this to 9.5. So now we will do 15.5 plus 9.5, which gives us 25. So that tells us that that is 2,500 hours which is the same as 1am because 2400 hours would be midnight, one hour after that would be 1am. So we know that the time in New York when the flight lands will be 1am, however we know that there is a 6 hour time difference so we must add this on to tell us the time in Gothenburg. 1am, 1, 1 plus 6 is 7, therefore it is 7am in Gothenburg when the flight lands. Now it's important that you go back and check your answers, however as this is just a demonstration, I will not be doing this. So question 2A is worth 6 marks and it tells us that you and your friend will go on a sightseeing trip into the city. We plan a route from start to finish at the hotel and we want to visit the city park, the Viking boat, the fish market and go to the cafe for a meal. And it gives a scale map of the city. So we must plan our route showing the order of places we want to visit and work out the distance between each place on our route. So first we want to visit City Park and then the Viking boat, then the fish market and then the cafe before returning back to the hotel. So on the scale diagram it tells us that two squares is equivalent to 200 metres which therefore means that one square equals 100 metres. So we can just count the amount of squares between each destination to find out how long our distance will be. So we are first going from the hotel to City Park. Got the hotel here and City Park here. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight squares, which would be 800 metres, when you times that by 100. We then go from City Park to the Viking Ball. So we've got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, 1,800. And we'll just double check that again. From City Park to the Viking Boat, got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, and 1,500, which is a prime example of why we must check our answers because I calculated it wrong to begin with. So it'll be 1,500 metres difference from the city park to the Viking boat. And then we'll go from the Viking boat to the fish market. So we'll have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100 metres. And then from the fish market to the cafe, We'll have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700 metres. And finally, from the cafe to the hotel, we will have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 metres. So we have all of the distances there, and it's now asking us to work out the total distance of our route in kilometres. So we will do 800 plus 1,500 plus 1,100 plus 700 plus 500. And we can use the calculator to help us with this calculation. 
So we've got 800, 1,500, 1,100, 700, and 500. Do that again because I made a mistake. So we've got 800 plus 1,500 plus 1,100 plus 700 plus 500, which gives us 4,600. So our route is 4,600 metres. However, the calculate the question asks us to give this in kilometres. So to do this, we will do 4,600 divided by a thousand and if we put that into the calculator it gives us 4.6 so we know the total di distance was 4.6 kilometers question 2b is worth two marks and it tells us that we need to show a check of how we use the scale in question 2a and explain how we know that one of the answers is correct so we will check the fourth to the finish, which is the cafe to the hotel, which we know is 500 metres. So for our check, we will write that 2 squares equals 200 metres, 1 square equals 100 metres, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, between the cafe and the hotel, So we will just put that 5 squared equals 500 metres and this proves that our answer is correct. So 2C is worth 4 marks and it tells us that we need to know how long it will take to walk the route. A typical person can walk at a pace of 5 kilometres in 1 hour and we must work out how long it will take to walk between each place to visit. We must round our answers to the nearest minute and complete the table. So we know that 1 hour in one hour we can walk five kilometres, which is the same as saying in 60 minutes we can walk five kilometres. So to find out how much we can walk, how long it will take to walk one kilometre, we will do 60 divided by five, which gives us 12. So we know it takes 12 minutes to walk one kilometre. And then to find out how long it will take to walk 100 metres, which is what we counted our route in, we will do 12 divided by 10, which will give us 1.2. So we know that it takes 1.2 minutes to walk 100 metres. So now we can work out our distance the time it will take to walk the distance we worked out in the previous question. Now it's important to make sure you take a note of your answers so you don't have to flick through between the questions. So I know that it took 800 metres to walk from the hotel to the first place which was City Park. So to work out how much time this will take us, we will do 800 divided by the 100 metres which gives us 8. We will then multiply 8 by 1.2 to tell us how many minutes it will take, which equals 9.6 minutes. Now, as the question told us to round our answer to the nearest minute, we will round this to 10 minutes. Okay. And then from City Park to the Viking Boat, we know it took 1,500 kilometres. We will divide this by 100, which gives us 15. We will then do 15 multiplied by 1.2, which gives us 18 minutes. As this is already a full minute, we do not need to round this up. So our third distance was 1,100. So we will divide this by 100. which gives us 11, and then we'll multiply this by 1.2, which 
gives us 13.2 minutes, we will round this to the nearest minute, which will be 13. We then know our distance from the third to the fourth place was 700 kilometers, so we will divide this by 100. which gives us 7 and then multiply this by 1.2 which gives us 8.4 minutes 8.4 rounds to the nearest minute would be 8 minutes and finally we know from the fourth place back to the hotel it was 500 kilometres so we will do that divided by 100 which is 5 multiplied by 1.2 gives us six minutes, so we know that it'll take six minutes to walk from the cafe to the hotel. Again, ensure you double check your, question, your answers, however, as this is a demonstration, I will not be doing this. And now we'll move on to question three. So question three is worth five marks, and it tells us that we will start the sightseeing trip from 10 a.m. You will stay 45 minutes at each place you visit, and you will allow will allow one hour and a half for your meal at the cafe. Make a timetable to show your arrival and departure times for each place you will visit and the time you will arrive back at the hotel. So, to do this we will just add a few extra rows and columns. So, we'll have our arrival time. So it's important that you make a note of your previous answers as you will need for this question. So if you have not, go back and make a note of them now. So we start at the hotel. We then go to City Park. We then go to the Viking boat. We then go to the fish market. We then go to the cafe and then back to the hotel. So we depart from the hotel at 10 a.m. as stated in the question and from the previous question we know that it takes 10 minutes to walk from the hotel to City Park. So we'll arrive at City Park at 10 past 10. We will then spend 45 minutes at each place so we will spend 45 minutes here which will take us to 10.55. It then takes 18 minutes for us to walk from the city park to the Viking boat. So 5 minutes will take us to 11 o'clock and then we've got another 13 minutes which will be 11.13. Again, we will spend 45 minutes here which will take us to 11.58. It then takes us 13 minutes to walk from the Viking boat to the fish market. Two minutes would take us to 12 o'clock and then there's another 11 minutes, so it would be 11 minutes past 12 that we arrive. We will stay there for 45 minutes, so we will stay there until 12.56. It then takes eight minutes to walk from the fish market to the cafe, which will leave us to four minutes past one. It states that we must leave an hour and a half for the meal at the cafe, so we will depart at 14.34 and it takes us six minutes to walk from the cafe to the hotel so we'll arrive at the cafe at 14.40 and that is how you would be expected to set out your table in the actual exam. Make sure that all of the information put in is clear and easy to understand and follow and hopefully you will gain the maximum marks possible. So that is the end of scenario two of the Stingill sample paper three. Thank you for listening and we will continue with scenario three in the next video. Thank you.